Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video, I'm going to continue the series on the Jabava London system with what I believe is the craziest uh, variation for black to go for or the craziest setup for black to go for because it basically forces white to play an insane attacking game uh, in which there is no backing down and basically one side is going to win. It's highly unlikely that it's going to be a draw. And those are setups where black plays bishop to f5, the position you can see on the board. Now, I'm going to give you an alternative to the mad continuation, to the mad pawnstorm continuation. But bear in mind that it's not as good because it doesn't give white an edge and black can easily equalize. So let's get into the opening. d4, black can start with d5 or knight f6, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's going to transpose. So d5, we play knight c3. And black now has an option. Uh, far more common is knight f6 on move 2, after which we play bishop f4 and black plays bishop f5. But it's also possible to play bishop f5 on move 2. And this is slightly different. Uh, this position is, I think, slightly more favorable for white, as I'm going to hopefully prove. And I think players with black should play the move knight f6 on move 2. The reason behind that is when you play knight f6 and then follow it up with bishop f5, you are controlling the e4 square. And this is going to be a very important square uh, in this variation. And I'm going to try to uh, show you what white can do to basically get his pawn to e4. If white's pawn reaches e4, then white has a broad center and, and a better position than in other variations. However, bishop f5 is still possible. And I'm going to show you this first be before we get into the meat of the variation. So what we are going to be doing uh, when black plays bishop f5, regardless of whether he plays it on move 2 or on move 3, we are going to chase this bishop away with a pawn storm, starting with f3. Now, if the knight hasn't been played out to f6, then we can play f3 e4. If there is a knight on f6, then we can play f3 g4. Because that square is not controlled enough. Of course, the e4 square is controlled by the pawn. So when black starts with bishop f5, we play f3. Most commonly, he's going to continue with e6. I'm going to show you what to do against knight f6 as well. And now we continue e4. And this is going to be slightly unusual compared to our normal uh, Jabala London system pawn storm, which I'm going to show you in a second. Black retreats the bishop and now you have two options. You can either exchange the pawn and get a simple position or you can push h4 and get a complicated position. Now, just one uh, small digression. If black plays knight f6 instead of e6, then of course e4 has been prevented. However, you can now play g4, which is our normal continuation, and after bishop g6 you can now continue h4, which is again our normal continuation. As in normal lines, when there's a pawn on e6 already, uh, we continue h4 and black basically has to save the bishop. So he can either play h6 or h5. Uh, in some positions, c5 is possible with a counterattack on the c3 knight. I'm going to show you that, but most commonly h6 or h5 is going to be played. And the difference here since the pawn hasn't been committed to e6 yet, is that white has some additional options. So let's say h6. Against h6 we play the move knight h3, and black should really try to strike out at white center. This is going to be the main downside of the setup. We have an unprotected d4 pawn, which is going to be attacked with the move c5. And now we play knight f4. This is a good continuation. Uh, the bishop doesn't really have to drop back to h7, although it can. Uh, the best move for black is knight c6. Uh, and of course, if we take the bishop, which is possible, we lose our d4 pawn. So we should really start with, with e3. And once the bishop drops back, we play g5. And this is really nice. The pawn hasn't been committed to e6 yet, which means that this pawn is weak. So once the knight retreats, we can simply grab this pawn. So. If black doesn't play with e6, he could be in trouble, lose the d5 pawn and lose the game quickly. So most commonly, with early bishop f5, black is going to follow it up with e6. And now, as I said, we continue e4 instead of g4. Why would we weaken our king side with the move g4, which is a weakening move, when we can expand with e4? Okay, the bishop has to go to g6. 
And now, as I said, two options, ED or H4. ED, I don't think, gives white any advantage. The engine gives this as completely equal. Uh, of course, black is going to recapture, and now most people play queen e2 check, forcing the bishop to e7, and there's a nice idea here, but it's not really deadly, and it doesn't really give white an edge. So we play queen e2, they play bishop e7 or knight e7, bishop e7 is more common, and now bishop to g5. This isn't really that much. Knight c6 defending and castle's queen side. It's a double-edged position in which for some reason your pawn is on f3, your queen is on e2. The knight basically has to do this to develop. This bishop is great. We haven't chased it away. So I'm not really a big fan. So against the early bishop f5, when you expand with e4, I would recommend h4. So you basically force this bishop to do something, or you force black to do something about the bishop. Uh, black is going to continue h5, most likely. h6 is not as good, because you can then get in bishop g5 and provoke the move f6. And after, uh, excuse me, uh, h5 is not uh, as good as h6, because you can get in bishop g5. But if they play h6, you can then continue g4 and, uh, and g5, and undermine that. So if h6 then g4 and you are going to be opening up uh, lines towards black's king. So basically it's never going to be safe to castle. But against h4, h5, you get in bishop g5. And now the queen has to move. And now one of the main ideas uh, after you expand with e4 or after you expand with g4 is to develop your bishop to d3, basically creating more trouble on this diagonal. And black should really exchange in the center because there's a lot of tension, so d4, e4, f4. E4. Uh, note that taking the pawn is not possible because of bishop b5 check winning the queen. So knight c6. Uh, and now knight f3, simply saving the pawn. Now again, taking is not possible because of, well, bishop b5 winning the queen. So most people, I believe, would play f6 in this position to chase the bishop away. It's probably the best move. But now there's a trick here. You can play d5, and it's not really possible to take the bishop because you gain a tempo on the queen, so he has to exchange first. The bishop was hanging, so takes, takes. And on knight before attacking the queen, for example, this is a logical continuation. Queen e3 check, bishop e7. And here already, black is in huge trouble. So this is one line that could give white a quick win. So you can simply castle queenside here. He cannot take your bishop. If fg5, then hg5. And basically, this knight doesn't have a square to go to. This rook only has h7. Castling queenside is highly risky. Uh, your knight is about to get trapped or about to go to a6. So for example, if you play a6, I play a3 winning the knight. If you play castle's queenside, I can take on a7. This is very tough for black to play. You have given up a piece, but this is tremendous. The engine gives this as plus four. So black playing the bishop out before playing the knight out is very risky because you get to play e4 basically for free. Okay, now, much more common is to play knight of six on move two. And against knight of six, we are going to have two very thematic positions which are going to branch out on move six for black. This is forced, the next line. So bishop f4, bishop f5, f3, e6, g4. We start chasing the bishop away. The bishop goes to g6 and we play h4. So now we have created a threat against the bishop. Black has two main options, h5 and h6. There's one option which I would like to mention because you have to know it. Now, I played the Jubava London system myself. So not knowing this could cost you... 20 minutes during the game, so that's not good. Uh, the third option, which we are going to go over briefly, is c5. Seemingly giving up the bishop, however, after h5, c takes d4. You basically have to take on d4, because if you take the bishop, you have a much worse position. So take the bishop, dc3, gf7 check, King f7, bc3, and this is much better for black. Your pawn structure, it's not that it's bad, it doesn't even exist. This is just mad, you, you have nothing. 
So for example, bishop d6, trading off your good bishop, and black is perfectly fine. He's going to get the knight to c6. One day maybe knight a5, knight c4, and completely crush you. Trading off this bishop, bishops weakens the e3 square. The queen could come out to b6 or to a5, putting pressure on c3. Uh, black could castle manually if he wishes to do so. So for example, rook e8, king g8. Th this is not good. So against c5, you can continue h5. But after cd4, you would have to take queen d4. And now the bishop takes on c2. And again, this is very good for black. So against c5, play e3 first. Okay, just prevent all of this. So if black exchanges, you can take back. You, can, you also have knight b5 ideas, which we saw in the introductory video. So if he does nothing, for example, bishop e7, then knight b5. And of course, queen a5 fails to c3. Eventually, he would have to play knight a6. And now again, we have this thematic knight on b5, putting pressure on a7 and, and a very good position. So against c5, just play e3. Now, black will have to play h5 or h6 again, for example, h6. And we have a position similar to what we are going to see in the main part of the video. But against h4, <coughs> most people will have no idea that c5 is even possible, just bear it in mind and meet it with e3, most people are going to play one of these two moves. Okay. Now, h5 and h6 are different. Uh, I think that h6 is easier to play against because you have the option to continue g5 undermining uh, the pawn structure, whereas after h5, uh, g5 is only attacking the knight. Uh, one other upside uh, of, uh, of h6 is that you're not committing your pawn structure too much. After he plays h5 and you play g5, your options have been severely reduced. But with a flexible pawn storm on the king side after h6, you have a lot of options. You can play h5, you can play g5. Okay, now before we get into that, I just want to show you an alternative to the madness you are about to see and the way to avoid f3, g4 and all of that stuff. If you don't want a complicated attacking game in which both sides could lose in a few moves, then you can play safely, but the position is going to be equal. You can continue e3. Okay, and after e3, black plays e6. You play bishop to d3, trade off the bishops, you can play cd or queen d. Both are fine. I think queen d is slightly better. c6, knight f3, bishop d6, takes, queen takes, castles. It's obvious that there is no advantage for white here. The best white has is to break the center with e4, but this, of course, is going to be perfectly equal. So, if you want a safe position, don't go for f3. But if you want to win, here's what you should do. So, let's look at h6 first. Uh, black plays h6. Now, one way to play this position, or the best way to play this position, is to prepare the move e4. We don't want to commit too much on the king side before we are able to get our king to at least relative safety and before we are able to complicate things in the center as well. What we want to do is castle queen side and then break with e4. So forcing black to do something about his king or if it should remain in the center creating issues. So when black plays h6 we continue e3. The plan is bishop to d3. Black has several options. I think the best one by far is to continue a6. a6 because you don't want to allow knight b5. It's as simple as that. Uh, knight b5 is a serious threat. So if, for example, c5 is played, which is possible, then you continue h5, gaining some space, and knight b5. And this, even though the engines give it as equal, is a very pleasant for position for white, as we already know from the introductory video. You have a great knight on b5, you have pressure on a7, uh, you have space on the king side, you have space in the center. 
this is perfect you can go for e4 you can go for g5 you can go for knight h3 you can go for knight e2 knight g3 there are many options here so for example bishop e7 knight h3 preparing g5 this is very pleasant black is basically in trouble from a human perspective so against e3 i really believe black should be preventing this knight b5 idea if he doesn't then you know what to do okay uh so a6 i think is best another alternative is bishop to d6 now when bishop to d6 is played you don't have to take you could but you don't have to uh you can play bishop to d3 which has been played a few times allowing bishop f4 ef4 which reinforces the e5 square and brings another pawn closer to the king side but i believe the best reaction is just knight h3 and then in the case of uh, bishop f4 you recapture with the knight forcing the bishop to move again now again a6 should be played queen d2 preparing to castle queen side c5 castles queen side knight c6 and here we have the battle lines drawn this is going to be a very common position uh, black's plan is fairly simple black's plan is b5 c4 b4 queen a5 checkmate okay so black is not without chances white's plan is the same thing on the king side with g5 so if i was to advise black what to do i would say don't castle too early which is risky in itself but if you put your king on g8 then g5 becomes a tremendous threat okay so again you can trade the bishops off you don't have to uh, i think trading is a good idea here so bishop takes queen takes and knight f4 forcing the bishop to move bishop to h7 and now you open up the center which may seem insane but if black gets in c4 and b5 and b4 then you're going to have far less space on the queen side and far less defensive options so in my opinion if you have the time dc is a good idea queen c and then you just continue with your attack obviously you can see that had black castled uh b before this had happened then of course the knight moves you take on h6 and and it's over so that's what i think you should do against bishop d6 if they go a6 which is the most resilient you continue bishop d3 which is normal uh black really should trade this off you don't want a rook on a7 you don't want a knight on a7 you don't want your pawn on on, on on g6 so bishop takes bishop again it's possible to take with the pawn i believe queen takes is better because you're going to get an e4 anyway so queen takes d3 c5 normal we saw all of this now you can play knight h3 or knight g2 i think knight g2 is better knight c6 and castles uh, when the bishop hasn't developed to d6 if you take on c5 you're giving black a tempo so he gets to develop the bishop for free it's less risky to take than not to take but it's better not to take if that makes any sense if you want a safer game take on c5 if you want a complicated game with optimal development then castle queenside and this is going to be basically the starting position of h6 uh, if black plays the best moves and now we are going to see plans for both sides in action so uh, what black wants to do he wants to attack on the queen side so the logical start is the space gaining c4 the queen only has d2 and now it's possible to play b5 it's possible to play queen a5 both these moves are good uh, very often you are going to be blocking this attack with b3 and knight a4 that's something you have to bear in mind your offensive plan is to expand on the in the center with e4 and cause complications before black can do something meaningful meaningful on the queen side so let's say black starts with b5 which is fine you can now continue g5 or e4 both are okay i think g5 is better simply forcing the knight to move away your knight on e2 is a very useful piece defending the bishop so if g5 happens and knight h5 now that the knight has relinquished control over e4 you can continue e4 and as you can see this is a mad position i mean it is a mad position anything could happen 
the, no games have been played from, from this position here, but this is very logical and it could occur uh, in a game. Way more common is that somebody is going to make a mistake along the way, way even in Grandmaster games. So I'm trying to show you the, the patterns. So b4, knight a4. This is the defensive way. Queen a5 and we play b3. Of course, this is not safe. I mean, the c-file could open up or be or become semi-open. Uh, the center could blow open. Uh, both both kings are basically in trouble. So let's say black exchanges here. You take, 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 at least trading off a pair of rooks. I would prefer to be white here because I think my king is safer. But then again, well, okay. It's hard to trade off the a4 knight without the light squared bishop. But if you could imagine a maneuver like this, or a maneuver like this, that then, yeah, you could be in trouble. So for example, takes, takes, knight a7. And this spells disaster if white is not careful. On the other hand, maybe you open up the center, maybe you get your rook to e1, maybe you win this pawn, maybe you play g6, weakening e6, so for example here. So it's a very double-edged position. But remember that in these h6 setups, your idea is always to attack here and to attack here. So my advice is to black don't castle. If he does, white knows what to do. If he doesn't, white still does the same thing and hopes that he gets there first. Okay, now the second option for black, uh, which I think is harder for white to play against, therefore I think it's better for black, is to play h5. Now, you don't want to allow h, g, f, g, because then you don't get in e4, so you're basically forced to play g5. Uh, black could play knight g8 or knight h7, but they are kind of slow. Knight h7 makes no sense, and knight g8 is a good move. However, uh, if Black has the time to force bishop d6, bishop, d6 uh, bishop f4, and e f4, then this maneuver is okay. But you are risking a lot because white doesn't have to allow e takes f4. I'm going to show you what I mean. So if you play knight g8, a very logical plan is knight e7, knight f5, and that would be wonderful. However, if, for example, uh, knight h3 here and bishop d6 and e3, then this is a no-brainer. Takes, takes, knight e7, knight f5. Perfect. However, if in this position white doesn't play e3, but instead plays, uh, well, e3 and bishop takes and knight takes, for example, and knight e7, uh, bishop d3, knight f5, e4, okay, the pawn is not protected. Let's protect the pawn somehow. I don't know. Basically, when, when white can play e4, this plan is not good. So against g5, most, if not all games, go knight fd7. Because you don't have time for this. Because basically white is going to keep an option open to play e4, chase the knight away. Okay, now, uh, we know what to do. We always know what to do. We play e3 and bishop d3. That's simple. Again, black's best is to play the move a6 to prevent any knight b5 ideas. Again, if something like c5 is played, we know what to do. We go knight b5 and knight a6 or okay, knight a6 and c3. So a6, bishop d3. Again, black shouldn't really allow you to double his pawns, so he takes and you take. Okay, and this, this is our starting position. This has been played many times, and unfortunately, black scores pretty well. The reason black scores pretty well is because it's very hard for white to find a good balance between offense and defense. I'm going to show you three patterns which you have to remember, which are going to make this easier for you. Now, we cannot really talk about this opening in regards to theory because there is no theory. There are plans and there are complications that could occur which you basically have to know how to respond to. What Black is going to do, 
he's going to play c5. This is by far the best move. And there's nothing better for black but to try his attacking madness with c4, b5, queen a5, b4 and, and try to mate you there. Because you are going to castle queenside. So white has two things he can do very early on which work because the black king is still in the center. The first thing, which I think you should play as soon as you are given the opportunity to play it, is g6. And it's best to play straight away. You can play knight g2. This has been played by strong players. So, for example, knight g2, knight c6, and then g6. You can do that. The knight is going to e2 anyway. But playing g6 straight away is, I think, more precise. Now, uh, black really only has one good move, uh, and that's g, uh, and that's f6. Queen f6 is also possible, but that runs into bishop g5, and then queen f5, and then e4, so you could be in trouble. So f6, preventing, of course, taking on f7. So now you have provoked a huge weakness, and of course, with this pawn here, it's very hard for black to ever castle on the king side. Why is that? Because you could simply play rook g1, rook g5, rook h5. Okay. Or you could play queen e2, e4, takes, takes, queen h5. Okay. So it's very unlikely that black is going to be castling queenside. So you continue knight uh, g2, black continues knight c6, you castle on the queen side. And now, uh, black's plans are kind of hard for white to meet but white's plans are kind of hard for black to meet white's plan is to expand with e4 and try to cause as much trouble as possible black's plan is to expand on the queen side and and try to checkmate so black could go two different ways one way is knight b4 very early on forcing queen d2 and then playing knight b6 getting both knights into the danger zone sort of again you don't want to take on c5 developing the bishop for free the other way to play is again c4 and queen d2 and b5 b4 again if b5 is played this rule doesn't always apply but you you've read it a million times when your opponent is playing on the wing you play in the center so e4 is a good reply always and, for example, b5, knight a4, queen a5, b3. We saw this already. And basically, with the black king here, uh, he could get checkmated quickly. So, it's common to castle on the queen side. And as you can see, anything could happen here. Just anything. I'm going to show you one example game with the move h5. This is the game Kovalev versus Seturaman. Uh, played in the World Rapid Championship in 2015. So Kovalev, Vladislav versus Seturaman, Seturaman, 2015 World Rapid Championship. You can find it on ChessGames.com, you can find it on Lee Chess. And this is a good example of a game that White won despite being completely lost. Okay, and I chose it to show you all the complications. So g5, knight f7, e3, a6, best moves, bishop d3, bishop d3, queen d3, c5, we saw this. And in this position, instead of playing g6, uh, white played knight g2, which is still fine. Knight c6, and again, I think g6 has to be played, he didn't play it. So this is a slight uh, concession, or a slightly worse position than what we saw. Instead, he castled queenside, and black just decided to mate him, queen a5. Again, it was best to continue g6 here, and after c4, queen d2, black can basically ignore uh, g6 for the moment because his attack is too strong, so b5. And if you take on f7, that's really nothing, so e4 and b4. And now you have to get creative because you don't have knight a4 anymore. The queen is already on a5, so ed5, bc3 gf7 check now taking this is risky so king f7 d6 king e6 knight c3 you've given up a piece but this king is about to get mated so g6 was a good attempt instead white played king b1 and now black is much better c4 queen d2 played b5 he played b3 uh, which is a bad move and he, I think the engine gives this as, yeah, minus 3. 
This is minus 3 for black. It's only because white didn't get in g6 in time. So his counterplay is too slow. Uh, bishop b4 was played. Now g6. Now the engine gives it as minus 2.5. And in fact, you can just take on g6. There's no reason not to, but f6 was played. And now e4. And black castled. So even though white could get a quick attack, he decided to castle because, well, black seems to be quicker. Queen e1 played. e5. Ed5. Knight d4. Knight d4. Bishop c3. Bishop d2, Bishop d2, Rook d2, e d4, Queen e6, King h8, Rook d4, and they reach a very complicated position in which Black is still better. After Rook f to d8, saving the Knight, White plays d6, and here the engine gives the only winning move for Black is f5, which I'm really struggling to understand. I think it's because it prevents rook d6 ideas, but I'm not re rook d5 ideas, but I'm not really sure. Instead, cb3 was played, and now the position is equal after ab3, rook ac8. White went on to win with rook d5. Of course, there's no pawn on f5. Rook c5, rook c5, knight c5, queen d5, and this pawn became too strong. The pawn on g6 is very annoying, and f5 was played here, but now just queen f5 and. And as I said, white went on to win the game. However, the amount of comp complications that arose in this game shows you that playing against h5 can be very, very risky. So c5 is going to happen. I would recommend playing g6 very early on and then castling queenside. So g6, f6, castles queenside. If they go c4 here, fine. Queen a5. And now you immediately play e4. It's important to break the center straight away because he simply doesn't have time for this now. You can take and here, here. Queen a7 I don't think is deadly because you can move your queen away. And yeah, it, again, it's going to be complicated. But regardless of what happens, these games are going to be very fun, very interesting and 99% won't be a draw. Okay, I hope you got something from this video. I hope you find this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.